The joint hearing will come to order. Without objection, the chair is authorized to declare a recess of the hearing at any time. I'd like to welcome everyone today to today's hearing entitled Balancing Knowledge and Governance Foundations for Effective Risk Management of Artificial Intelligence. I now recognize myself for five minutes for an opening statement. I'd like to welcome everyone to what I am hopeful will be a very fruitful discussion on foundational questions that Congress needs to answer to ensure that we strike a careful balance between protecting consumers and protecting innovation as we create a regulatory framework for artificial intelligence. Earlier this summer, the Science Committee held a hearing to explore how Congress can ensure that AI technology advances our national interest. One of the unifying takeaways from that hearing was that there remains a number of unsolved technical challenges which, if we address them, would advance innovation while making AI systems safer, more transparent, and more easily easier to implement guardrails around. Today's hearing will build upon that theme by exploring how the Science Committee can support research, testing, and the development of methods and tools for managing AI risks. These tools and methods will be critical to the good governments of these systems as Congress examines how we should regulate artificial intelligence. I believe that foundational research on AI is a necessary precondition for safer systems. While regulations can make undesirable actions unlawful, technological advances in coordination with other countries and monitoring who has access to the compute necessary to train frontier AI models and how it's being put to use will be critical tools in supporting and enforcing these regulations. One example of this is the use of confidential computing to make the theft of AI models more difficult. It is currently relatively straightforward to steal an AI model because the data needed to operate the model, known technically as the model weights, is stored in raw data files. Stealing these files would allow criminals to use the model without spending the millions of dollars on compute and data necessary to train and develop the model. Stricter cybersecurity laws can only go so far in preventing this from occurring. However, recent research into confidential computing could potentially enable the model to be operated without allowing access to the model weights, rendering cyber theft of the model impossible and addressing the root causes of this problem. Another challenge that advances in research can help resolve is identifying whether AI has been used to generate content. It's clear that instances of identity fraud, plagiarism, and a host of other issues will become more and more common as the power of AI tools increase. Watermarking is a technique where digital content is encrypted with a unique, often hidden identifier that provides information about its origin. Watermarking has the potential to identify the origin of any content regardless of how it was created or digitally altered. Although current discussions of watermarking center on desire that all AI-generated content be watermarked, watermarking can also use to prove the providence of authentic content. In fact, I believe it's entirely possible that in the future people might automatically assume that any content is AI-generated unless its watermark proves its authenticity. Solving this technical problem would enable a new set of good governance tools concerning generative AI that were previously infeasible. These examples illustrate the fact that research and policy are not mutually exclusive, but in fact are mutually dependent. Research advances unlock previously unpractical approaches to regulation, and smart policy accelerates research. I believe we must also standardize technical definitions for methodologies, risks, and technological concepts across all of our agencies of government. The NIST AI Risk Management Framework lays out a foundation that other agencies can build upon. As these agencies consider passing rules or using procurement authorities to incentivize good behavior, they should also ensure a consistent methodology for assessing risk levels and tailor their policies accordingly. Another technical area in which Congress has a crucial role to play is promoting and establishing best practices. This includes everything from technical standards and evaluation benchmarks to testing the trustworthiness and risks of AI systems. And let us not forget that Congress should certainly not rush to overregulate but we should also not be complacent. The U.S. must avoid falling behind other major world powers who are finalizing their AI standards and regulations. Without proactive American leadership, supremacy in AI could be seized by the EU or China, both of whom are taking far more draconian approaches to AI regulation. 
Because the U.S. Use currently leads the rest of the world in AI research and development, it makes no sense for us to stand by while American companies are forced to either make educated guesses or to play by others' rules. We must also ensure that our academic institutions continue to play an active role in research and development of AI and that the transparent system of publication and peer review that has enabled its success thus far is not replaced with an opaque system where cutting edge research is only performed by corporations. This is why I believe it's critical that we establish a national artificial resource, uh, research resource, NAIR we call it, as a shared national research infrastructure to ensure researchers have access to the tools needed to test, develop, and create new AI-backed technologies. This idea was proposed earlier this Congress when I joined my fellow AI caucus chairs in introducing H.R. 5077, the Creating Resources for Every American to Experiment with Artificial Intelligence Act, or the CREATE Act, we call it. See what we did there? Establishing a shared computing and data infrastructure resource such as that detailed in the Act would democratize access to AI by providing research, uh, researchers and students across scientific fields and disciplines with access to compute resources and high quality data along with the appropriate educational tools and user support. I would like to thank all of our witnesses for taking the time this afternoon to join us for this important discussion. I'm looking forward to hearing your recommendations to how this committee can strengthen our nation's leadership in artificial intelligence and set clear rules for the safe, responsible, and human-centered development of this exciting new technology.